Fun to play with and not to eat. Oh, it's so yummy. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. You better mean those nums. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In today's installment, we're counting down the top five facts about Play-Doh. The man's name was Joe McVicker. His sister-in-law was Kay Zufall. Okay, I believe you. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. This simple modeling clay has been encouraging kids to get creative for generations. So come along as we explore a handful of fun facts, tantalizing tidbits, and memorable moments that have helped shape this wildly successful product's legacy. Number five, it came from humble beginnings. The road to success is rarely straightforward. In Play-Doh's case, it was a particularly sooty one. When the earliest version of this product hit the shelves in the 1930s, it was a household cleaner, specifically designed to remove coal residue that built up on wallpaper in the days of coal-based furnaces. Oh, it's awfully dark and gloomy up there. Commissioned by Kroger grocery stores from the then failing Kutol Soap Company, Kutol wall cleaner was a success. But then coal heating went out of style. So as gas and electric heating came in, there was uh, no longer a need for the, for the cleaning goo. With oil and gas furnaces, Kutol was left holding a handful of essentially useless dough. Just when financial failure seemed inevitable, one innovative arts teacher made the save. But that's a story for a later fact. Number four, Dr. Tian Lu. Play-Doh expert. Regardless of how good you were at making Play-Doh creations as a kid, your experience as an amateur sculpting enthusiast is probably best left off your professional resume. The only person whom this does not apply to is Dr. Tian Liu, who held the official and unique position of Play-Doh expert at Rainbow Crafts, Kenner Toys and Hasbro over the years. How could that be? You made that job up. The McVicker family, who owned the Kutol soap and invented the original wall cleaner compound, hired Dr. Liu to make the necessary changes to the recipe in order to improve its lifespan and make it child-friendly. While there are plenty of recipes out there for homemade Play-Doh, there's something special about Liu's secret formula that sets it apart from all imitations. Ravioli, ravioli, give me the formuoli. Number 3. A seriously popular scent. Is there anything that smells more like childhood than Play-Doh? Not at all, boy! <laughs> If it's been a while since you've handled some, crack open a plastic can of the stuff, breathe it in, and let the memories of a simpler time wash over you. People have a serious attachment to this distinctly homely scent. In fact, to celebrate Play-Doh's 50th anniversary in 2006, Hasbro teamed with the Demeter Fragrance Library in order to create a Play-Doh scented cologne. Demeter says that the product is intended for highly creative people who seek whimsical scent reminiscent of their childhood. In 2016, Play-Doh celebrated 60 years by creating a record-breaking plastic tub mosaic in Mexico City, proving that with Play-Doh, you can get creative without even opening the container. Number 2. The Mother of Play-Doh They say that behind every successful man is a great woman, and Play-Doh is no exception. Yeah. So today, we're kindly asking the McVicker men behind the wall cleaner to step aside so that Kay Zufall can take the credit she deserves. Because without his sister-in-law Kay, Joe McVicker would have never turned his wall cleaner into a children's toy. She's often the unnamed teacher who suggested the new application after having tested the product on her school children. Hey, is this a true story? Joe loved the idea and promptly gave it the wildly unappealing name, Kutol's Rainbow Modeling Compound. Apparently the only person who had ever met an actual child, Kay Zufall, kindly suggested the infinitely better name, Play-Doh. Since then, over 2 billion cans of it have been sold. Number one, Play-Doh, a tool of fraud and deception. What they're gonna do is put a bit of Play-Doh onto the fingerprint. Play-Doh is a great toy for kids. It's non-toxic and possesses minimal choking hazard risks. Whoa, whoa, hang on, Lois. You promised me we were all eating my Play-Doh pasta tonight. In reality, when it comes to Play-Doh, it's those devious adults that you really have to worry about. In the early 2000s, when fingerprint scanning technology began to take off, people discovered the sinister potential of this malleable compound, copying fingerprints. According to one 2005 study, over 90% of scanners could be beaten using Play-Doh. Over a decade later, advanced biometric systems are more secure. But even in 2016, many consumer scanners, like those found in the iPhone, are still vulnerable to this seemingly harmless substance. Using a dental mold or comparable substance to copy a fingerprint and a bit of Play-Doh, your phone can be unlocked with relative ease. What the hell? Well, thank God I'm full of Play-Doh. <gasps> yeah. 
There we are. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.